playing the Pokemon TCG competitively is very exciting and rewarding, but all of the information can be a bit overwhelming, especially if you're fresh to the tournament scene. So the goal of this video is to briefly explain each deck archetype you might come up against at events, and even some lesser popular decks just so you're not surprised by them. In addition, I will provide successful deck lists, overall strategies, and reasons to play or not play the decks. At the end of the video, I'll highlight the easiest decks to pick up and play to success, as well as popular tech cards you might want to include in your deck, or even be wary of from your opponents. If you enjoyed today's video, remember to subscribe for more Pokemon TCG content. If you'd like to support my channel, you can do so by using code CELIO5 at pokacollect.com for a wide selection of sealed products, pre-orders for new releases, and unique mystery box items. Use code CELIO at potownstore.com when shopping for Pokemon TCG Live code cards. Also use my codes and affiliate links at Dragon Shield Sleeves, my favorite card sleeves to use, and into the AM apparel for comfortable and passionate clothing. Lastly, if you have piles of Pokemon TCG bulk cards lying around, use TCGbulk.com to find yourself a buyer for all of your Pokemon TCG bulk cards. There's a lot to cover today, so let's begin. I wanted to start with important new cards from Paradox Rift that you might see included in a multitude of decks and want to consider for your own deck as well. Iron Hands EX is an incredibly powerful card because of its Amp You Very Much attack, which allows you to take an extra prize card when this attack KOs a Pokemon. Although Iron Hands EX is a lightning type Pokemon, Amp You Very Much only needs one lightning energy to attack, so this can be included in decks like Chi and Palbax Calibur, Lost Zone Box, and Lugia Archeops, as well as lightning type decks like Moran on Flaffy. You'll want to watch out for this one if you're playing Pokemon with 120 HP or less, or even if your larger Pokemon have been damaged already, and risk giving up an extra prize to amp you very much. Countercatcher has been reprinted into standard format and is immediately impacting the game. This card has the same effect as Boss's Orders, except it is on an item card instead of a supporter card. The catch is that you must be behind in prize cards in order to play it, so evolving decks like Gardevoir EX and Charizard EX, which have a slower start, and control decks like Snorlax Stall, which never take a prize card, all make great use of this card. Seven out of the top eight decks at Brisbane Regionals included at least one countercatcher in their deck lists, and 10 out of the top 16 decks at LAIC included at least one countercatcher in their deck lists. Technical Machine Evolution is a Pokemon tool card that gives the attached Pokemon an attack it can use called Evolution. This Evolution attack is the most efficient way in standard format to quickly evolve multiple Pokemon as early as turn 1 going second. We've only seen it used in Charizard EX decks so far to any success at major events, but it will be around in standard format for years to come, and will surely find application in other decks eventually. TM De Evolution is another new tool card that works like Technical Machine Evolution, except it devolves your opponent's Pokemon. This is a much more niche effect, since it will only be used offensively when devolving your opponent's Pokemon is better than using one of your own typical attacks. But it has been included in a diverse selection of decks at major events already, like Entei V Iron Valiant, Inteleon Urshifu, and Lost Zone Box. The first handful of deck archetypes we'll look at today are all brand new decks from Paradox Rift. The Roaring Moon EX deck focuses around Roaring Moon EX as the main attacker, powering it up with Professor Seda's Vitality and Dark Patch, with some variants of the deck choosing to also include Galarian Moltres V and Energy Switch to get energies onto your Roaring Moon. Radiant Greninja is an auto-inclusion in this deck to draw cards and to get energies into the discard pile, so some lists will accompany this with water energies so you can use Moonlight Shuriken. Roaring Moon EX is an aggressive deck with a simple game plan, do big damage and win the game fast. Golden Go EX is a card that got a little more time to shine in Japan compared to the West, since it was included in the set prior to the Paradox Pokemon in the Japanese release schedule. Golden Go EX has been less than extraordinary with the release of Paradox Rift, with its best accomplishments coming from online events. Golden Go EX appears to have potential since it is the main attacker of the deck and has an ability that draws cards. In addition to this, it has decent HP, often avoiding one-hit knockouts. Golden Go EX decks use a combination of a lot of basic energies, superior energy retrievals, and earthen vessels to take big KOs with Make It Rain. 
Even with these attributes making it look like a competitive card, it has not seen much success at major in real life events. Iron Valiant EX has the unique ability Tachyon Bits, which puts two damage counters on one of your opponent's Pokemon when this Pokemon switches into the active position during your turn. Iron Valiant EX has influenced several variants of decks to be built, like Iron Valiant Urshifu, which replaces Inteleon VMAX's Double Gunner with Iron Valiant's Tachyon Bits, Iron Valiant Jolteon VMAX, which revives this forgotten VMAX Pokemon to do a similar thing as the Iron Valiant Urshifu deck, and Iron Valiant Zatu, which is the only variant in which Iron Valiant EX is actually used as an attacker. None of these are the most successful variant of Iron Valiant EX decks, however, as that ended up being Entei V Iron Valiant, which Noah Sawyer took all the way to the finals of LEIC 2023. Entei V Iron Valiant combines the aggression of Entei V, which can attack as early as turn 1 thanks to Magma Basin, with the supplemental damage of Iron Valiant's Tachyon Bits ability. Iron Valiant decks are quite scary for evolution decks that start out with small Pokemon like Ralts and Charmander, since Iron Valiant can combine Tachyon Bits with Metacham V's Yoga Loop to take an extra turn and dismantle the opponent's board. Cloth and Hisuian Electrode V have synergy because they do more damage if they are affected by special conditions. They pair well with cards like Spicy Seasoned Curry and the new Brute Bonnet card, which are both integral pieces of this quirky new deck. With only one placement at a real life major event and a sprinkle of online tournament success, this deck has risen above being just a meme, but not by very much. This isn't a deck I'd suggest if your main goal is to win, but if you want to win on your own terms with an off-meta strategy and some funny looking Pokemon, this deck is probably perfect for you. Now onto the top decks. This section of the video will cover deck archetypes which have earned themselves prestige at the top of the metagame. Gardevoir EX is a powerful stage 2 deck that offers small and large decision making every step of the way making it a great deck choice for players who want to be in control of their games and express their skill level. Gardevoir gained many powerful cards from Paradox Rift, including Countercatcher, Screamtail, and Luxurious Cape. Instead of defaulting to Zacian V as the deck's big attacker, you can now choose between Zacian or Luxurious Cape, which can turn your Screamtail and Shining Arcana Gardevoir into an attacker that rivals or even surpasses that of Zacian V. This deck is supported by Curlia's Refinement and Gardevoir's Shining Arcana abilities, while Gardevoir EX's Psychic Embrace allows you to flood the board with Psychic Energy. This deck is known for being tactical and adaptive due to its slower strategy involving setting up multiple evolution Pokemon, often using Curlia's Mirage Step attack. Several attacking options including Cresselia, Gardevoir, and Zacian V, and its potential to stage comebacks with Iono, Reversal Energy, and now Countercatcher as well. The Lost Zone archetype sends cards to the Lost Zone with Comeface Flower Selecting ability and the supporter card Colors' Experiment to unlock powerful effects, like Cramorant's Lost Provisions ability, Mirage Gate, and Sableye's Lost Mine Attack. Lost Zone can be complicated to play due to presenting more decisions for the player compared to most other decks, but it can adapt to overcome most matchups, which makes this archetype very enticing for experienced players. Lost Zone decks were much more prevalent before the release of Paradox Rift, since this new set brought cards like Iron Hands EX, Jirachi, and Iron Valiant EX, which all spell disaster for most Lost Zone variants. With this in mind, Lost Zone decks are still strong and competitively viable, just not as popular and oppressive as they once were. Brennan Kamerman piloted Lost Zone Box to 5th place at LAIC, featuring Radiant Charizard over Radiant Greninja, as well as one copy of Roaring Moon EX to threaten one-hit knockouts on literally anything. A more typical build of Turbo Lost Zone Box placed 2nd at a recent Philippines Regional League, playing a classic lineup of Pokemon such as Dragonite V and Raikou V to supplement an otherwise low damage output from Cramorant, Sableye, and Radiant Greninja. World-renowned player Tord Reklev created a peculiar Lost Zone decklist and took it all the way to 5th place at the recent Gdansk Regionals. Using the new Iron Hands EX and Roaring Moon EX cards, Palkia V-Star, and Kyogre, all in this toolbox style deck. Lastly, for the Lost Zone variants, we have Giratina V Star Lost Zone. This is still referred to as a Lost Zone box style deck, including Sableye, Cramorant, and Radiant Greninja, but it is much more focused on Giratina V and Giratina V Star. 
Giratina V offers Abyss Seeking as a helpful early attack, and Shred as an efficient source of damage without evolving up to the V-Star. Giratina V-Star is incredibly powerful with the Lost Impact attack dealing 280, and if that's not enough, its Star Requiem V-Star attack can instantly KO anything in its path. The most popular and competitively viable Lost Zone deck seems to be Giratina V-Star Lost Zone at this time, but there's still plenty of room for innovation in this format. Charizard EX has found itself at the top of the current metagame, with several ways to build the deck floating around. Charizard EX has high HP, accelerates energy, and has a strong attack. If the card has any real shortcomings, it's that Charizard EX is a stage 2 Pokemon, which you'll need rare candy for most of the time. But with the release of Paradox Rift, you now have the option of evolving your Pokemon up from Charmander to Charmeleon with TM Evolution, foregoing the need of rare candy. Charizard EX with Pidgeot EX has been the most successful variant of Charizard still, with former world champion Robin Schultz piloting his new list for the deck to top 4 at the recent Gdansk Regionals. Sixth place, also at Gdansk Regionals, Thomas Jones played the Bibarel variant of Charizard EX, using the new Technical Machine Evolution tool, and unique to this deck list was the inclusion of Delphox V, which has an attack similar to that of Radiant Greninja's Moonlight Shuriken and Rapid Striker Shifu V Max's G Max Rapid Flow. The third and final Charizard EX variant to mention is Charizard EX with the Lost Zone engine, which placed top 4 at a Philippines Regional League. This Lost Zone and Charizard EX hybrid is a peculiar deck that we rarely see top minds of the game regard as a real top tier deck, but it does pop up with placements here and there. Lugia V-Star Archaeops has been a force to be reckoned with since its release in Silver Tempest, but it looks like Lugia is finally not on top of the metagame anymore. The best variant of Lugia V-Star was the Single Strike Lugia deck, using Single Strike Pokemon like Tyranitar V, Stonejourner, and Eviltal. These Pokemon used powerful Single Strike energies which increased their damage output by 20, and Archaeops can attach these directly to Single Strike Pokemon from the deck. The Single Strike Lugia deck is very powerful, but heavily relies on a smooth start. Its losses are often to itself, so to speak, in the event of no Lugia V on turn 1, or not getting two Archaeops into the discard pile for turn 2. The more popular variant of Lugia in recent months is Colorless Lugia, which uses Snorlax and Lugia as the main attackers, splashing in Pokemon which need specific energy types like Radiant Charizard and Iron Hand ZX. This version of the deck can be kind of messy with the different basic energy types, and not a lot of space in the deck for more than just one or two of each basic energy card needed, but it does have a higher power level compared to a more basic version of Lugia V-Star. The Mew VMAX archetype has adapted throughout its time in the game to stay relevant in the most competitive environments over two years after its release. DTE Mew is the variant of Mew VMAX which only plays double turbo energy, and no other energy cards. This version of the deck relies on Mew VMAX's consistent stream of efficient damage, copying Genesect V's Technoblast with Cross Fusion Strike turn after turn. This consistent damage output is accompanied by disrupting the opponent with Judge plus Path to the Peak. This version of Mew VMAX will often play the item card Grabber to further disrupt the opponent, which is especially useful versus Charizard EX, Mew VMAX's worst matchup. DTE Mew VMAX is a linear deck since it only has one attacking Pokemon, but offers many smaller decisions each turn to maximize the amount of cards you can draw with Fusion Strike System. Fusion Strike Mew VMAX plays Fusion Strike Energies along with the supporter card Alessa Sparkle. With these energies and energy acceleration, the deck uses Meloetta and Ice Q as additional attackers, which greatly help in matchups where the opponent can easily knock out Mew V Max. An additional version of Fusion Strike Mew V Max, which plays Excelgore, has also popped up due to Excelgore's grass typing being advantageous against Roaring Moon EX and Charizard EX. All variants of Mew VMAX have found success in the current standard format since the release of Paradox Rift, but Fusion Strike Mew boasts the highest placements thus far. Maridon EX is a deck you should have on your radar, as it won the recent Latin American International Championships. Not only is this deck incredibly strong, but it's also a pretty good deck to start out with since it's not overly complicated and will present you with meaningful decisions and enough options to influence the outcome of most of your games. Iron Hands EX was a huge buff to the deck, 
So now Maridon EX has a positive matchup against both Gardevoir EX and Lost Zone decks. Next is Chi and Palbax Calibur, another deck enhanced by the release of Iron Hands EX. Although plenty of top players played the deck at LAIC, it's struggling to convert that to a great tournament finish due to the natural volatility of the archetype. Bax Calibur is used for its super cold ability, and from there you either take knockouts with Chi and Pal's Hailblade, or you snipe smaller Pokemon with Radiant Greninja's Moonlight Shuriken. This deck has potential to one hit KO anything, and can be an aggressive force all game, but is susceptible to clunky starting hands due to playing combo cards that aren't good without the other half, like Bax Calibur and Rare Candy, Iron Hands EX and Lightning Energy, and Cross Switchers. To add to the variants possible, Pokestop has been decided as the optimal stadium for Chi and Pal, but that doesn't mean you won't have some very unfortunate discards with Pokestop's effect. Urshifu Inteleon is another deck like Mew and Lugia in that it has been around for a really long time, and although players will forget about it or count it out due to newer and supposedly stronger cards, this archetype is still putting up fantastic results, like 10th place at LAIC. Rapid Strike Urshifu VMAX offers an aggressive attack that strives against fighting weak Pokemon like Maridon and Iron Hands, as well as GMAX Rapid Flow, which preys on low HP Pokemon like Ralts, Charmanders, and Comfes. This is a tactical deck with incredible opportunities for knocking out multiple Pokemon at once with Rapid Strike Urshifu VMAX's GMAX Rapid Flow, Inteleon VMAX's Double Gunner ability, and Radiant Alakazam's Painful Spoons ability. Even more impressive is the unique effect of Matacham V's Yoga Loop, which allows you to take an extra turn if Yoga Loop knocks out a Pokemon. The last meta deck we'll cover is Snorlax Stall, which just won the Gdansk Regional Championships. This deck focuses on Snorlax's ability Block, which says your opponent can't retreat their active Pokemon. With the upgrade of Countercatcher from Paradox Rift and pre-existing cards, Erika's Invitation and Echoing Horn, it's quite easy to continuously trap a Pokemon which your opponent can't do meaningful damage with in the active position. This deck wins by forcing your opponent to run out of cards in their deck, since they'll eventually be trapped with a useless Pokemon in the active if things work out for the Snorlax stall player. The weakness of Storlex Stall is that it will lose pretty hard to a deck like Giratina V-Star, which can limit the amount of Pokemon it plays down, and has a high amount of switching cards naturally included in the deck. In this next section, we'll look at a few rogue decks, which are less popular and have been less successful in the current standard format, but are still worth mentioning. A Palkia V-Star deck placed top 4 at the Gdansk Regionals, and nobody could have seen this coming. Paired with Ice Rider Calyrex VMAX and Suicune V, two cards we haven't seen used competitively for quite some time, this deck is able to consistently put out efficient amounts of damage turn after turn with a selection of attackers that need only two energy to attack. Arceus V-Star decks have certainly seen better days, but a card like Arceus which provides great consistency with its ability and a very decent attack as well will always be decent at the very least. We'll typically see Arceus V-Star decks use Disruption like Judge and Path to the Peak to make up for its lower damage output, and slower start compared to decks like Roaring Moon and Maridon, which can attack on their first turn. Most recently, Arceus paired with Giratina V-Star and Superior V-Star, placed in the top 32 at LAIC. Zorark Box is probably the most unique deck in today's metagame, since it can reasonably play 10 or more different Stage 1 Pokémon all in the same deck. This is thanks to Zorark's ability Phantom Transformation, which allows you to switch Zorark with a Stage 1 Pokemon of your choosing from your discard pile. Combined with Reversal Energy, this encourages you to build a deck with several different types of Pokemon to cover a variety of weaknesses and strategies, like Cleavor for Fighting Weak Pokemon, Scovillion for Grass Weak Pokemon, and Slowbro, which can close out the game with Twilight Inspiration. Zorak Box has stayed a rogue deck due to its inconsistencies and poor matchups against decks like Lawson Box, Rapid Striker, Shifu, and Iron Valiant, which all take advantage of low HP Pokemon. Serena EX is truly a rogue deck, with zero placements at real life events, hardly any good finishes in online events, but still pops up all over the PTCG Live ladder to infuriate opponents and get some easy wins. Serena EX uses its Icicle Soul attack to put Pokemon down to 30 HP remaining, which pairs incredibly well with the Panic Mask tool card, leaving your opponent's Pokemon unable to damage Serena EX. 
Hisuian Braviary is an incredibly niche Pokemon, which works wonders in this deck to clean up all of the Pokemon with 30 HP or less remaining. This deck hard counters a few decks, but understanding the strategy of Serena EX, or playing Lost Vacuum, or Professor Tauros, or even some healing effects, completely shuts this deck down. Our final rogue deck feature today is Reggie's. This deck fell out of existence when Rotation took away all of its important special energy cards, but New Hope sparked for Reggie's with the release of Earthen Vessel to discard energies and find the specific basic energy cards you need from your deck. Reggie Gigas can accelerate energies to one of your Pokemon as long as you have all of the Reggies in play, and from there you can choose the Reggie which is best suited for the situation you're in. Some deck lists choose to include Thornton and Iron Hands EX to switch a Reggie into an Iron Hands, but I chose a more straightforward list for today's presentation. Now on to the tech cards. These cards are worth considering for your deck if they help against a tricky matchup or serve a specific purpose against a strategy you've been struggling against. Your opponents will also know about these tech cards, so it's a good idea to keep these in mind, especially if they can be used against your deck. Minior is your one-stop shop for a way to beat Snorlax Stall. Minior's ability switches it into the active position when you attach an energy to it, getting that trapped Pokemon out and bringing up Minior to hit Snorlax for 160 damage with Gravitational Tackle. If your deck doesn't run enough switching cards or other ways out of Snorlax's block ability, adding in this Minior can flip that matchup on its head. Jirachi is a great tech against Sableye's Lost Mine, Cresselia's Moonglow Reverse, and Metacham V's Yoga Loop. If any of these attacks are frequently giving you a hard time, Jirachi could certainly help. Be aware, however, that Jirachi only protects your benched Pokémon from the effects of these attacks. Manaphy, similar to Jirachi, protects your benched Pokémon from damage, whereas Jirachi protects them from damage counters. Manaphy protects against attacks like Radiant Greninja's Moonlight Shuriken, Rapid Striker Shifu VMAX's GMAX Rapid Flow, and Screamtail's Roaring Scream. Drapion V and Spiritomb are the two strongest techs against Mew VMAX, but they can also offer other application. If you're playing a deck that can attach enough energies to Drapion V, you can use it as an attacker against Gardevoir EX. Spiritomb not only shuts down Genesect V, but it also stops Luminion V, so against a deck like Lugia V-Star, which often relies on Luminion V to find supporter cards, Spiritomb can stop them in their tracks. Avery is a great supporter against decks that need a large bench to function optimally, like Gardevoir and Chi and Pal, which both want to have several support Pokemon on their bench. What's great about Avery is that it draws three cards as well, so you're never too upset to see it, since at the very least you'll get to draw some extra cards. Professor Toro's scenario can be used as a tech against Snorlax Stall, but it also doubles as a healing card, since you can just pick up any Pokemon with it. So if your Charizard EX or Mew VMAX are heavily damaged and you have another ready to go, you can Toro that damaged Pokemon up and essentially erase one of your opponent's attacks. Lost Vacuum is a really valuable tech since it is multi-purpose. You can use this to get rid of a stadium that affects you like Path to the Peak, Collapse Stadium, or Temple of Sinnoh, or defensive tool cards like Bravery Charm, Ancient Booster Energy Capsule, and Vengeful Punch. Canceling Cologne has dwindled down in popularity, but there are still a few prominent abilities you can shut off with it, like Snorlax's Block, Manaphy's Wave Veil, and Jirachi's Stellar Veil. Of course, you do have to get the Pokémon into the active position for Canceling Cologne to shut off its ability. Vengeful Punch is best used against Pokémon which you commonly miss KOs on by 10 to 40 damage, or against Pokémon which damage themselves before attacking. For example, if Chi and Pal knocks out a single prizer, and you use Charizard EX with a Vengeful Punch to do 210 to Chi and Pal, if they knock out your Charizard with that same Chi and Pal, they'll knock themselves out with Vengeful Punch. Vengeful Punch is commonly used as a tech against Gardevoir, since Shining Arcana Gardevoir and Zacian V will be heavily damaged from Psychic Embrace attachments when they're swinging for a lot of damage. Justified Gloves is the best of the type-specific gloves right now, since it boosts your damage output against Charizard EX and against Roaring Moon EX. If you expect to face both of these decks, and the extra 30 damage can be the difference with getting a knockout, Justified Gloves might be worth it in your deck. 
In this final section of today's video, I wanted to talk about three decks which are great for beginners and people who don't have a lot of time to master a complicated deck, but still want a winning chance at a competitive environment. Lugia Archaeops is very straightforward, since your goal every single game is to establish a Lugia V-Star and put two Archaeops onto the board with Summoning Star. From there, you don't have to do much since your Archaeops are established and you can get all the energy you need with Primal Turbos. Maridon Flaffy is one of the best decks in Standard right now, but it's also quite forgiving to newer players, since the power level is pretty high and the skill floor is quite low. The biggest decisions you'll be making with this deck is which Pokemon you need room for on the bench in each matchup, and figuring out the best attacker each turn depending on the situation. And lastly, Roaring Moon is a fantastic deck, especially for how easy it is to master. Like Lugia, your goal is typically pretty straightforward. Get 3 energy on a Roaring Moon and take 1 hit knockouts every turn. There is a little more nuance with this deck compared to Lugia, and way more sequencing with all the items and other cards you'll draw, especially in the early turns. But if you like going fast and playing half your deck on the first turn of the game, you'll have a lot of fun with this deck and win plenty of games. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and check out ways to support my content and save money on cards, codes, sleeves, and more at the link in the description down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time here on Celio's Network.